Hi there, in today's video I am going to demonstrate a vulnerability called proxy shell vulnerability. Actually it contains the three vulnerabilities and those are exploited uh, in order to create uh, the remote code execution over the Microsoft uh, Exchange. And this vulnerability is uh, widely used by the attackers and nowadays uh, used for spreading the ransomware. So let's try to understand the proxy shell vulnerability because proxy shell contains the three vulnerability. First is pre-auth, uh, path confusion lead to the ACL bypass. Second vulnerability is related to elevation of privileges. And third one is post auth attribute file write lead to remote code execution. This vulnerability was discovered uh, by Orange and uh, the Microsoft has already released the patches but somehow, as you know, that most of the organizations uh, they have they are restricted to apply the patches because of uh, the business reasons, because of X, Y, Z reasons. I'm not sure why they don't apply. So I figured out uh, one of the vulnerable servers from uh, Shodan, and I'll show you that uh, how this vulnerability can be exploited automatically without even knowing the email address, which is one of the prerequisite uh, for uh, you know manual exploitations but uh, this will be exploited automatically as the script will work like a script query you just need to know that one level exchange server and that's it and after that you will execute uh, this code and which will lead to uh, the shell on the server so we will be deep dive all of these steps but before going to uh, to uh, the hands-on experience uh, let's try to understand some more the key variable inputs from here and the uh, researcher also discovered that this vulnerability are used for log file log file ransomware and uh, how this ransomware is packed let's try to understand this ransomware actually uh, once the attacker gain a exploit uh, over the microsoft exchange he got in the shell after getting the shell, there is another vulnerability which will be used to uh, uh, to you know move to the lateral movement, which is EFS potato. And I have already created uh, one video for EFS potato. You can go ahead and look this on uh, this. And also, uh, there will be a, a water loader, and which will load the cobalt strike. And from the cobalt strike, we get the proactive directory full of policies, informations, and all of this stuff. And then uh, they will reach to uh, the Active Directory. Once somebody reaches to the Active Directory, they can control the whole environment. This is the way how uh, this uh, log file ransomware is going to work. And the credit goes to TG Soft uh, IT. And uh, they explain this way and how uh, this ransomware is going to uh, be exploited. So they, they are using the different vulnerabilities, including the proxy shell. So we are focusing only the proxy shells. Once the server is compromised, you can understand that an attacker can control your active directory environment and can lead to the ransomware attack. Similarly, they will, they are highlighting here that CISA has already uh, you know shared the uh, advisories for applying the latest patches for the Microsoft, configuring and auditing your exchange servers, active directories. A lot of other information at the point of uh, recording this video i have seen that there is a new vulnerability is discovered related to proxy uh, the name of that is the proxy token proxy token is quite interesting before uh, we understand this token we need to know that how uh, these components really works so here is uh, your mobile device your web web portal which you use to access the email or exchange or is a outlook client which they generally you know send the request to your ias servers which is the cache server and cache server actually forward this request to the backend server which is mostly the exchange servers or uh, mailbox so you can say these all residing over here the researcher has discovered this vulnerability that if you put uh, uh, the cookie security token and what is really happens <laughs> you will be surprised that it uh, the cache server which is uh, actually working as a proxy they are actually forwarding this request to the backend 
So here they have highlighted that Microsoft has created two sites in IIS. One is for front end, one is for back end. The front end actually uh, operates on the port number 80 and 443 for HTTPS. And the back end is generally operate port number 81 and 444. So uh, these things, you know, distinguish uh, what is the front end, what is the back end. The front end website mostly used as a proxy to the back end, obviously, because once you are authenticated, then only you will move to the uh, back end services, which is IIS services. You are uh, mainly that your web services, especially related to the Microsoft Outlook, Outlook or Exchange. Uh, here is the OWA. Uh, they are specifying this is the page for all post authentication requests and role packages and here is the high because the Microsoft Exchange is you know quite high complex product so they have uh, something called delegated authentications so if the authentication has happened and they use it is uh, uh, this technique is called uh, not technique it is called the method for the features which is delegate authentications to support the cross forest topology because uh, it contains the multiple you know components of how the different components can uh, communicate each other but the researcher found that uh, if you have the security token in the cookies the front end actually uh, did not validate the, the request it will directly forward this request to the back end and uh, back end, unfortunately, it uh, actually did not validate uh, the request and it processed without authentications. You can read the, uh, this information over here. And uh, once I will get uh, you know, the exploit or more information about this proxy token, I will be making another video for it. Right now, we will be focusing on a uh, proxy shell, which is automatic proxy shell. So you don't need anything. So all the credit goes to UDYZ. This is the guy who, who has actually developed this proxy uh, shell script in the Python. And uh, they are using the different, you know, uh, classes, functions. Uh, I don't want to dig out into each and every functions. We will be focusing on, on how to identify uh, the vulnerable servers. And once we have identified how we will be using this uh, exploit code to get uh, the shell on the server so let's jump into it first we will be looking into uh, how we will be identifying these vulnerable servers and then we will move ahead and try to exploit one of these vulnerable servers available over the internet all right uh, so I have already created a video for actually for identifying the proxy shell vulnerability using the nmap i will be leveraging some of uh, the pieces from that video if you have if you haven't checked it out just uh, watch my that video so that you can have a full understanding of this component so i will be using this nmap script to identify uh, vulnerable servers so i have just copy and paste and this is script actually going to validate whether uh, the server is vulnerable for a proxy shell. As you can see that it's not vulnerable. Uh, maybe that uh, they have this some sort of protections enabled. I'm not sure at this point of time because it's checked only that uh, some of uh, the component, not all the things. Here you can see this is the server and uh, this server is one level or proxy cell ssrf so that's why uh, you can use this script to identify and validate uh, whether the server is one level uh, for as um, proxy cell ssrf if it is then we can go ahead with the exploitation phase so i will be using one of uh, the server which is known as uh, let me copy the server name and uh, Let's validate this server. There are plenty of servers are available over the internet. If you look for the showdown, you will find a list, a huge list of the servers, more than 20,000 as per my understanding so far. Those are still vulnerable for this. So I will be targeting 
uh, this server which is uh, okay uh, is, um, let me use the hyper hyphen p and flag it will show us whether this uh, server is vulnerable for our objectives so now, now the requests are getting filtered as you can see and uh, so uh, they have configured the servers, uh, that, uh, but uh, I would like to highlight that uh, this server is not vulnerable at this point of time. However, when I was testing and validating this request, and at this point of time, the server was vulnerable. I will show you the screenshot which I took it at this at that point. As you can see in your uh, in your screen. Uh, this is the server which I was targeting before. So, uh, as per the proxy cell automation, we don't need to worry about the email address and anything because the rest of the part is taken care by uh, the script itself. As you can see here, uh, hyphen T is the target which I have specified for it, and after that, the script automatically, uh, you know, discovered all the informations regarding the fully qualified domain name and administrators you can see the administrator names and the leak ACDN and leak SIID uh, which contains the 500 is means and this is the one of the administrator and uh, the tokens informations set EWS which is again uh, you know quite sensitive informations and then write the shell ASP NAT underscore client so it was successfully uh, um, actually um, they were able to write this cell and I got anti-system over there uh, let me open that screenshot and after that uh, you have uh, the full control over this uh, over the server so let me show you which is uh, which with the another server which is here this is one level correct so we will be targeting the similar way uh, it will be the Python tree If you use the exploit.py, actually um, the difference between here is you need the target, you need the email address, but this automated, uh, you know, script will help you to just uh, specify uh, specify your target, and then you will get it over there. So let's try with this. See that this script is getting blocked at this point of time. Okay, let's use uh, the another server which we found. Uh, it was successfully able to find out a uh, fully qualified domain name as you can see here and then also retrieve that what is that email address, leak ACDN and also leaked SID. You can see the tokens. I have to just stop this because you got the idea which I am trying to say. And leak SID tokens uh, set EWS successful with the subject uh, this and write web shell at ASP underscore client. So it can lead you to uh, get an uh, you know shell over there. So it is pretty easy to exploit because uh, the code is already available over the internet. So make sure that you have already applied the patches and uh, have the configurations and the hardening in place not only for the hardening perspective but also you leverage some of the deception technology which can help you to identify the attack before the attacks will take your crown jewels so that's it in this video hope you enjoyed if it is then don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel you can also share this information with some others groups and so that they can also protect themselves against against such kind of attacks uh, since uh, you have seen that this is the attack which is used by uh, the ransomware groups to spread the ransomware so it is it is paramount for the organizations those are still waiting for applying the patches they should apply these patches on immediate on immediate basis otherwise they will be the fall as a victim uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye then. Take care.